I, I oh did put on okay. eyebrows. Hi, though. everyone. This is Rachel from Ray K Books, and I'm going to be interviewing Miss Rita here. Hello. How are you? Hi. I'm fine. Ready for the interviewing. I'm so excited. Thank you for being here. So let's start off with a Twitter question just to get okay. things going. And the first one is by Sue, and she says, which of your characters would you like to have as one of your own children? Ooh, which one of my children? Oh, which one of my characters would I like to have? Hmm. Um. Oh, I, I'm. I've gotten to be so lazy these days. I, I'm ashamed to say it, but I would like to have Delphine uh, because she. Not only could I ask her to do things she would do them and she would do them well and um and free me so i could um i don't know write or take boxing lessons or whatever it is i wanted to do so i would be very selfish and say delphine <laughs> so what inspired you to write your first book ah um okay my, my first book pro I, well i'm not going to tell you about my first novel i will tell you about my first book my first book was written when I was uh, about 12 years old, and it was a 39-chapter book. I still have um, notebooks full of this masterpiece, and um, I was paying. Um, I, I grew up in in Seaside, California, and I was paying homage to my beloved um, um, uh, place where I grew up, and we had moved uh, back to New York and. Sorry, but I hated New York. It was cold and the people were too fast. And, and so I wanted to hold on to Seaside. So I wrote, oh, I, I'm sure it was a 100,000 word novel of no. <laughs> about my... Uh, about my exploits in Seaside. I still have, like I said, I still have a, um, quite a few of these notebooks. But, um, but it was really um, wanting to hold on to something. Um, and I think really holding on to childhood because I felt like I had a real childhood in Seaside, but in New York, wow, fast, fast, hurry, hurry, move, move, you know. So, so you don't like cold very much? Um, not so much, uh, but I'm learning to like it now. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm uh, I'm in Minnesota and it's negative forty. Oh, Minnesota! Yeah, very cold. Oh my good. Well, hmm. I'll be visiting you all in the summertime. So, what, <laughs> what, what does it get up to in in Minnesota? Okay. About like like sixty degrees. Yeah, no, it gets it gets up to like ninety. Oh, okay. I know it's actually pretty good. It's just the the winters that really suck. Uh, <laughs> but oh. onwards. Uh, so, are there any experiences based on someone you know or events in your own life on your newest novel? Ooh, okay. Well, hmm. Huh. Uh, breaking news! I just sent that manuscript in today. Um, but let me think. Um, is there anything specific? That's personal to me in that novel. Wait a minute. Let me think. Let me think. Oh goodness gracious! You, TikTok, you, Rita. I know. I know. I know. I am not a New Yorker. Um, I, I I will probably remember later. Um 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 um. I I can't think. I don't know. We can go on to another question. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably come back. I will okay. come back. We'll come back. We'll come back. Okay. So, that's why I can't do radio. Yes. <laughs> it's okay. No one blames you. Uh, <laughs> so what books have most influenced your life? Oh, oh dear. Um, I would say um, there is this wonderful book called uh, 31 Brothers and Sisters, and it was written in the 50s uh, by uh, this woman named Reba Mayeth per um, Persky. Okay, I've just inverted her name. Rita Payeth Mersky. There we go. And, um, and it's a story about a, a Zulu girl who is the daughter of a chief, and she goes on a on a hunt and and um, and is victorious. And I was such a tomboy, and um, and I had very short hair, and um, and and I just 
um, I loved her adventure and her fearlessness. But um, uh, next to that book, I would have to say Harriet the Spy because she was always writing. And um, I was always writing. In fact, my nickname in in um, junior high was the Russian spy because I was always writing and everyone in my classroom thought I was reporting back to Mother Russia. Oh, that is so funny. <laughs> oh, that is so true. <laughs> you were kind of like the bookworming school, I guess? Oh, indeed, yes. Yes, I was. Um, I still have... I still have my, let's see, I have my diaries from school, from my, you know, school age. Um, I have um, journals that I wrote in and a ton of stories that no one will ever see. But, yeah, I was always writing. So we have another Twitter question from Sue. Yes. Just got PSB11. <laughs> what about that time period do you find surprising in your research? Mm. Um, I don't know if I find it surprising um, because I lived through it and I remembered it and so I wanted to really pay homage to that as well. Um, but what I really liked about uh, the period, the, the late 60s and the early 70s, is that every day seemed to be like a day of social change. Um, we were worried about everything and we were on top of it all, you know, everything from um, the ecology and, and um, uh, pollution and uh, the Vietnam War and you name it, women's rights. We, uh, it, everything was just busting open and so the country was going through so much change. So I really liked that that kind of period that everything was happening and we, we weren't exactly ready for it just like Delphine isn't exactly ready for a, um, a woman a congresswoman you know that's all just very new and foreign to her but but it was all happening and you had to kind of get on board and and, um, and um, ride the train because it was coming well it was there <laughs> Were you very active then at that age? You know, like very, you went out and you did stuff for it, or were you just looking at at it at that time? Does that well, my parents wouldn't let me go, but so far, um, but I was re I was an avid reader. Um, I read everything about the Black Panthers I could find my hands on. So I was reading, um, I was reading about and in the words of Angela Davis and Eldridge Cleaver and H. Rat Brown and all of the Elaine Brown and all of these people um, because I was very much fascinated by that movement. It was very um, strong and strident. And I had never seen anything quite like it. Um, and there was something kind of, I, I would say, maybe glamorous or sexy about it because it, it had this this air uh, to it that um, that was very youthful and vigorous. And so, you know, I just thought, wow, you know, that was quite a movement to me. Um, but um, I, I was I was reading everything and um, whatever protests that my mother allowed us to be involved in, we did. You know, so we were kind of activist kids as well. Nice, and and that was a, that was a good childhood. You liked you you were very pro with your family, and that's what. Oh you yeah, well you know I had a great fam um, I had a re really great um, experience in that my mother was. Um, involved with uh, my mother was involved with the anti-poverty program which the Black Panther movement comes out of um, and she was very much about the hippies and and everything my mother ran away from home and went to uh, Monterey Monterey pop to see uh, Jimi Hendrix and and um, and uh, Janis Joplin and Country Joe and Fish and all of that and left us poor kids at home. Um, but on the other hand, my father was in Vietnam. My father was a military man, you know. Um, so, so we had pretty much, we had kind of a mix of both, um, uh, you know, of both um, kinds of leanings as uh, that the country was kind of divided. But the funny thing about my father was that he, um, as much as he was a military man, he was a very, he was a very liberal person and he was fighting for the rights of, um, of 
people, especially black people. So, um, and, the, and the military was one way of him um, being able to kind of um, move forward in life. So, uh, so I had kind of the best of both worlds. And it, it, was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. That sounds fun. It sounds like a really great time. Yeah. Yeah. So what is the hardest and the easiest part of writing a book? Ooh, okay. The hardest part of writing a book is when everything goes dry and blank <laughs> and um, uh, or when you have this great idea and the words you are using uh, to, to, um, to describe that great idea Wow, they're they're really unimpressive, and you <laughs> and you go, oh my goodness, thank goodness, no one can see this. You know, you you um, it's it's the very humbling times, but you know, those are the hard times, and you have to just push through them and recognize each stage for what it is. And um, you know, there is for me, there's the time that I tell myself the story, um, and the time that I start to really. Um, see how it all works together, and the actual writing, the, the part that makes it um, hopefully seamless to the reader's ear and mind, um, that, that comes last. So I try to make sure the story is very solid first. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that concludes the questions for right now. Now we're going to play Would You Rather Literature Edition. Oh, no! Oh, yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, with it. so for those who don't know what would you rather is, I'm going to ask a question such as, would you rather eat apples or orange for the rest of your life? And Rita has to say either apple or orange, except this is about books. So the first one, <laughs> would you rather read a book that is poorly written but has an excellent story or read one with weak content but is written well? Oh, dear. Oh, okay. You know what? Oh, I'm going to have to say I will read the poorly written with a great story. Um, because I hate to sit still, and if, if the structure, if there isn't a glimmer of structure for me to grab onto, mm -hmm. I start to, I start to zone out. Um, I, I will, day, I daydream easily, so. Um. <laughs> I, I feel you, man, I feel you, like seriously, when I'm in the middle of work, I'm like, yes, but unicorns, and I just like, go <laughs> into my own <laughs> I have a big playground up here, and, and if you give me the room to roam, I will just go. So, yeah, yeah. So, what's got to happen? Have, who would you rather have as a child, Harry Potter or Hermione Granger? Oh, well, I was Hermione, so I will say I would rather have Harry. Would you rather write novels where all of the characters are women or men? Oh, you mean for the rest of my life, forever and ever? Yes. Okay, I'm going to have to say women because I, I think women have tremendous flexibility and, and depth. Um, and, and I think men are just too much on the surface. So women. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Would you, would you rather only write your books in trilogies or standalones? Standalone! <laughs> You're a standalone? Standalone! <laughs> it just so happened that uh, One Crazy Summer um, worked out that way. Um, I think because I didn't want to let the characters go. But, um, I, again, like I said, you know, if I, if I stay in the same place too long, then, uh, you know, I, I get bored, um, and I don't know how long I can sustain. So, um, I, I like getting there, you know, doing what I want to do, and then, all right, on to something else. So, this one's going to be a little difficult, possibly. Oh, man, not the hard ones! Okay. <laughs> Just you wait. Uh, would you rather... <laughs> Write a book without using conjunct conjunctions 
okay. And have every sentence of your book begin with one E. Or no, why did I say one E? Or have every sentence of your book begin with one. Let's go conjunction free. <laughs> Boy, that would be um, beginning, with, you know, write, writing without conjunctions. Um, that would be really hard because I mostly write in uh, past tense. And um, so at some point, I'm always breaking for that and instead of going for the gerund. Um, or I'm flipping things on the other hand and I use but. So I say, let's throw all of that out and let's go without the conjunctions. That sounds good. <laughs> okay. yeah. Well thought out. Good job. <laughs> so the last one is would you rather write a plot twist you hated or write a character you hated? Ooh, well, I, I think I would much rather write a uh, character that I hated. So we're going to go back to Twitter questions now. That concludes our game. Thank you. Yay! Good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Cynthia says, I hear the term appropriation thrown around a lot. What do you consider appropriation? Um... Um, I, and I think this is mainly uh, when we're dealing with uh, work that is outside of our experience, work outside of our cultural or personal truth, which gets tricky because we're writers of fiction, so we're making up quite a bit. But when we're trying to tap into something very real um, and we don't have a first-hand or truly personal uh, connection, um, uh, then you're trying to take something. You're trying to take something that um, that is very much um, a part of a culture and make it into something. Um, and hmm, you know, on one hand, the part of me that wants to write, write, write does not want to tell anybody what they can and cannot write. But I always feel that you do have a certain amount of responsibility if you're going to write outside of your culture, if you're go or if you're going to take something that is not a part of your experience and then offer it to the world um, as an authority, because that's what you are when you are an author. You are the authority. You must be... You must be um, able to stand up to whatever will come your way, uh, by the way of criticism um, and so forth. And, and um, um, you know, often we want someone to validate what we have written bef um, before we put it out there, and I think vetting is a good thing, but what you have to say that is outside of you if you don't feel strong enough about that and you don't have enough um, material, supporting material to kind of um, uh, act as your anchor, then, you know, maybe you have to think about what your motives are and why you must, uh, why you must write that piece. Um, but um, uh, all that being said, I'm always writing outside of my experiences and I'm going to go even further and further. Um, um, and so, you know, it's it's a very tricky thing. Um, I just say be be prepared to stand up, but be very responsible in what it is that you're um, that you're going to push out there as an authority, as a writer. That's very deep. <laughs> I, I like that. That's a really good answer. <laughs> you're saying that you're not good at this. That's not true. You're really good at this. <laughs> so. Another one for right now is by Night Author, and she says, can you share your tips on writing narrative? You do it so well. Do it! Don't make me give them away! Um, <laughs> well, you know, it, it depends. Um, I think every book has its own um, air that it, that it breathes, and you have to be in tune to that. Um, even the, uh, there are now three One Crazy Summer books, 
uh, well, there will soon be a third, um, and each one of them has slightly a different narrative air, even though it's the same narrator. It has everything to do with what it what it is you want to say about the book, and and what what is happening inside the character who's viewpoint you will see um, the book through. So I have a character who is incrementally growing as she goes along and she's changing in some ways, very positive ways, and in some ways, um, very typical ways that, that um, young people experience because they are pushing out of their old selves and into a new self. Oh, I sound like Cecile. I sound like her mother. Anyway, um, <laughs> but so that means that I have to really listen and be aware that I'm not writing the old book. I'm writing a new book through new eyes. And, I, and so I spend a lot of time within the, the thoughts of my characters, within um, just within them, so that I'm trying to get at closer and closer to what it is that they want to say and how they feel um, so that it's not um, me and it's not their old selves you know so uh, so it, for me um, meditation is everything and just kind of really dropping down into character and seeing and feeling and, and then and then there's a whole lot of whittling um, and editing that 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 that's involved but that's a whole nother lecture. <laughs> so you said that your characters have a lot of change. Do you believe that that's very important in a book for a character to, throughout the book, you know, like be a different person or have different values at the end of it? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, I think most books really have to be about the change that the character goes through. We have because we want to follow them on their journey and um, and they have to know something that they didn't know when they first started or they have to step up to the plate in some ways but um, sometimes um, sometimes I will let a character stagnate um, uh, purposely and I did that in uh, my YA novel Jumped um, I have characters who are very much who they are and they don't quite change um, and that's because I'm trying to engage the reader in a kind of a way to be critical of the characters but nine times out of ten with with that exception or um, uh, stories like that um, yeah I, I want to see something happen inside that character I want to see them um, confront I think that's what I like so much about especially young adult characters, but younger characters as well. It's that self-confrontation um, where, uh, where, you know, you, you can no longer do the same things, say the same things, act the same way. You're pushed to kind of the edge of action. Mm -hmm. So we have another Twitter question. Ooh. What are you currently working on? This is from Laronic. Okay, well, this morning I was working on whittling down my my uh, my third and final one crazy summer novel um, um, it, that is called um, Gone Crazy in Alabama, and hopefully you will see that in um, the summer of 2015. But um, shortly after that, I went back. Um, I'm now delving into research for uh, for a novel that um, I'd love to like write fairly quickly, and um, I want to write for young boys who it's not so much that they don't like to read, but maybe it's a little challenging. So it's going to be challenging for me to um, to write a book that respects the intellect of say a nine ten year old. Um, but with language that kind of builds on a skill. So uh, wish me luck. Um, and luck. So, yeah. <laughs> so so far the the novel is called um, Clay, uh, Clayton Bird, uh, C L A Y T O N um, Bird B Y R D, um, and it's about a boy, a, a young boy dealing with gr uh, with grief who goes on an odyssey. So um, wish me luck, and um, I hope I really pull this off. You're very talented, so I know that you will. So we have 
time for two more Twitter questions. Okay. And one of them is, what is the day in the life of you? Ooh, what is the day in the life of Rita Williams? Okay, I, I will give you a good, a good day in my a good typical day. Um, I get, as soon as, as soon as I begin to feel a little sun over my eyes, I wake up. I um I I pray a little, and then I wake up and I I write um I write by hand. Hold on one second. Um, oh my gosh. Gosh like this <laughs> and so um, in this notebook wait a minute <laughs> uh, my, my dear friend Cynthia Lydic Smith uh, no 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 it's not Cynthia um, I'm mixing up my friends my dear friend um, Co Booth says that this calls this my rain man journals but um, but I I write I write and then um, I'm usually just telling myself the story as I'm writing um, I, I sketch, um, I do any kind of diagrams that I need to do. Um, I write a, a, what I think is the good germ of a chapter, which is eventually going to um, grow into something else. Then I have breakfast, and I do my email. Then I go, uh, then I go to the gym uh, for boxing. Um, um, my boxing. father, my father was a boxer, okay. and uh, he was trained by Angelo Dundee, who was Muhammad Ali's trainer. And so, one, he gave um, my sister, brother, and I the gift of gloves. And so, um, so I, so I go and and I work out with my trainer, um, and um, I, you know, I practice my practice my combinations, and then I bring my breathing down and come back to being human um, and peaceful um, and then I start um, I start writing again um, and uh, then I read a little bit um, but um, I, I work I generally work in some form through uh, until about eight o'clock and and then I eat because I'm hungry. <laughs> I like how you said that. You're like you're not like oh I ate. You're like I eat. I eat. I oh yeah. <laughs> Eating is very big. That's you know that that's very important. I eat about five meals a day. Um, probably like um, <laughs> maybe about um, three sort of big ones and two little ones. Um, I, I gotta eat, uh, or else I'm inhuman. Um. <laughs> well, I mean, you box, so you need the calories to. Oh yeah, that's my justification. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. When you work out, you need more calories. That's right, pound for pound, and I mean pound. <laughs> so. so we have one more Twitter question, and then okay. I'm going to talk about the giveaway to everyone. Ooh. So the last question is again from Laronic, and she says, "What are you doing for Valentine's Day?" Ooh, what am I doing for Valentine's Day? Hmm. <laughs> what am I doing, honey? What am I doing for Valentine's Day? She's gonna wait to see what kind of chocolate she gets. Oh, uh, they can't see your face. Um, say hi. Hello again. This is Fred. Yes, we did meet. <laughs> um, well, now you're speaking to the oh, world at large. Hi, how is how is everybody? <laughs> <laughs> we met in junior high school. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Way back. Way but back. Anyway, yeah. I don't know so, I so, so I think it's too late, honey. Um. So, what are, what am I doing for Valentine's Day? Well, she might be eating an orange rind. It's just a small piece because they had that. Chocolate covered orange rinds. Oh, I like those a lot. <laughs> I like those a lot. Um, yes, I'll be looking forward to on the fourteenth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's always food related. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe right. we'll go out to a show. So that mm -hmm. concludes the interview. Thank you so much, Rita. You are welcome. Yes, and it was good to meet you too. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about the giveaway. Okay. It's going to be for U.S. and Canada only, and Rita is going to give away PSB 11. Uh, and what you have to do, you have to do three things. One is optional. The first thing you have to do is subscribe. To, oh, she's holding it up. 
<laughs> Whoops. Yeah. Sorry. Can you see it? Yeah. There we go. Okay. There and we go. That's it. There we go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So what you have to do is one, subscribe to Ray K Books. This interview is going to become a a, this, a YouTube. Uh, video so you will see the Ray K book so you just click subscribe number two is you have to um, comment on the video when it becomes a video and three this is optional because not everybody has a Twitter I would like you to uh, follow Rita at one crazy Rita and Yay. if you do follow Rita please put that in your comments so I can verify and Ooh. and this will end on February 6th. Okay. So thank you so much again, Rita, for doing this. This was fun. You are welcome. It was a lot of fun. Yes, and good luck with your new book. I'm so excited Yay. that you turned in the draft. I know. Me too. <laughs> Finally. So. Yeah, and now I'm going to eat. Good. You yeah. eat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. You're welcome. So long. <laughs>